Welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Aparna, working as scientist, MFPI Food Quality Control Laboratory, Professor Jay Shankar Telangana State Agricultural University, Hyderabad. Today, we will be learning about food pigments. And under this topic, we will learn about what are food pigments, what is the difference between food pigments and colorants, properties of food pigments, stability of the pigments during processing. As we already know, color is a complex phenomena and to provide the absolute definition of pigment, it is not an easy task. But still, let us try to find out or know what is the difference between a pigment and a colorant. Pigments are compounds that absorb light in the wavelength range of visible region. This absorption is due to the molecule specific structure that is the chromophore that captures the energy from a radiant source. Some energy is not adsorbed and is reflected or refracted and this energy captured by the eye generates neural impulses which are transmitted to the brain where they can be interpreted as a color. Now let us know about colorants. Colorants are the substances which modify the perceived color of objects or impart color to otherwise colorless objects. With this definition, pigments and dyes are grouped within the term colorants. It is reasoned that if only solubility is considered, then the same substance can be a dye or pigment depending on the applications. Now coming to the brief history of pigments, these pigments were first used as per the documented records by the Egyptians in 1500 BC. Later on, during early civilization, during 400 BC, the pigments were used for coloring wine. Slowly, from 400 BC in the early civilization to 1990s, 1940s, 1960s till 2000, more than 200 food colors have been identified, which are both natural origin pigments and synthetic origin pigments, which are legally permissible for application in various kinds of foods and various applications for food industry also. Now coming to the food pigments which exist in the nature. The pigments are widely distributed in living organisms and a large number of structures have been reported. The anthocyanin group alone has more than 250 different colors or different structures. It is common to find pigments with great structural complexity. In fact, it is not a simple task to establish a universal classification which covers all the pigments known till date. Especially the classification that permits indexing of newly discovered pigments. Let us know the molecular affinities of the pigments. Coming to the molecular affinities of pigments, the most biological pigments are grouped into no more than six kinds of structures. The six kinds of structures include tetrapyroles, isoperanoids, quinones, benzopyrans, N-heterocyclic compounds and metalloproteins. Scientific reports have described about 34 tetrapyroles over 600 carotenoids, more than 4100 flavonoids and over 250 anthocyanins till date. Quinones are very widely distributed and probably by virtue of the importance of their functions. In addition, several of the most important pigments in ancient times were quinones which were used in dyeing the textile products. In addition, anthraquinones from insects have been used as food color additives. Further, the N-heterocyclic compounds indigo were used in the textile industry. Indigo was obtained from Indigofera tinctoria and Istatus tinctoria. This is one of the oldest known colorants. Moreover, the Tiran purple is a derivative of indigo teen which was isolated from several Mediterranean molasses. In the food industry, beta lanes are again most important pigments of the N-heterocyclic group. In addition, this subgroup of pigments has been related to melanins which are the main pigments in the hair and skin of the mammals. 
purines and terines are pigments of this group and they are important in fish and insects whereas flavins are widely distributed. Interestingly, some marine invertebrates are pigmented by riboflavin. The same is true for several bacteria also. Other, en other N-heterocyclic pigments such as phenazines and phenoxines also are present and are being used as different pigment sources for coloring the foods. Then we have the next group that is the metalloproteins which comprise a large number of proteins that are widely distributed among the living organisms because their biological function is essential for life. These metalloproteins are not considered as food additives but chlorophyll has some commercial importance. However, the quality of some foods is related to coloration of metalloproteins. Then another important aspect of metalloproteins is that some of them can be produced through biotechnology in sufficient quantity to be considered as a potential colorant in the future. Let us now see various metalloproteins, their functionality and the color applications. There are different kinds of metalloproteins like the first one is hemoglobin and myoglobin. The hemoglobin and myoglobin are red in color and their main function is to transport oxygen and transport the carbon dioxide also. Then we have the next metalloprotein that is chlorophyll which is a binding protein and this chlorophyll is green in color and the function of chlorophyll is for photosynthesis in the plants. Then we have the ceruloplasmin which is blue in color and the function is mostly in the liver functional activities. Then we have the hemovenadin which is apple green in color and the function of hemovenadin is for transportation of oxygen in acid is for transportation of oxygen in acidic conditions. However, as pointed out, the tremendous variability of organisms over the world means that a large group of miscellaneous pigments do not fit into this kind of classification. However, the discovery of new pigments in bacteria, fungi and invertebrates whose structural characteristics are a clear re reflection of their functionality and specificity in the host organism. Now, let us now now let us look at the natural distribution of pigments. Coming to the natural distribution of pigments, first we will see chlorophylls. Chlorophylls and carotenoids are the most abundant pigments in nature. They are involved in fundamental processes and life on earth entirely depends on them. Plants, photosynthetic bacteria and protozoa like the plankton are the main sources of organic materials that are required for development of other living organisms such as invertebrate as well as vertebrate animals. Chlorophyll is not found in animals but carotenoids accumulate in some organs like eyes and tissues like skin etc. In general, animal carotenoids are obtained from the common diet. Other pigments are also found in the animals which have very important functions like heme proteins, riboflavins etc. Whereas the functions of others is not very clearly determined till now. For example, the melanins and flavonoids. Now other organisms have interesting pigments that have been used or have potential use and applications. Lichens produced epsides, the ancient and most extensively used dyes which were used as textile dyeing agents. In addition, they also have application as sunlight filters and as chemical indicators like for example in preparation of litmus paper, pH indicators etc. and also as cytological stains used in microbiological experiments. Some of the pigments obtained by treatment of lichen substances are ochrine and paritine. More than 1000 pigments have been identified in fungi. Consequently, the diversity of fungi pigments is the second 
in importance after the plant flavonoids fungi are not photosynthetic and they also do not contain chlorophyll now let us look at the pigment distribution in the animals as per the vertebrate and invertebrate classification first let us see the vertebrate organisms the group of pigments included in vertebrate organisms are heme proteins melanins carotenoids and riboflavin heme proteins and melanins are very very widely distributed carotenoids are present in mammals birds reptiles amphibians and fish riboflavin is present in reptiles amphibians and fish then let us look at the pigments which are present in the invertebrate organisms the group of pigments which includes in the invertebrate organisms are carotenoids quinones melanins heme and flavonoids now under carotenoids we have the iconoderms insects malcoxterae crustacea arachnid arachnida poifera and protozoa then we have the quinones in which we have the iconoderms insects and arachnida then we have the melanins in which iconoderms insects malcostreca and crustacea are available then we have the heme pigments which come under the invertebrates which include mollusks malcostreca crustacea and arachnida then we have the flavonoids in which insects and crustacea are present now the carotenoid distribution in fungi is restricted in some orders in addition flavonoids are scarce in fungi whereas riboflavin which imparts the yellow color in the genera lyophilum is also included as a pigment then beta lanes melanins and a small number of carotenoids and some kinds of anthraquinones also are commonly present in fungi and plants which are used as pigments then we have the chlorophylls and carotenoids which are present in the photosynthetic bacteria in non photosynthetic bacteria beta and gamma carotene have been identified however the quinones melanins and flavonoids are very scarce in this group then we have the phenazines which are found exclusively in bacteria and they are also present in dark blue procyanin forms then we have ser several phenazines which have been described and some of them even have antibiotic property apart from the pigment as can be deduced the fungi and bacteria are characterized by considerable diversity of pigments therefore the single cell organisms like fungi bacteria and algae are considered the most likely commercial source of new pigments with biotechnology and in particular cell culture techniques as the tools for their exploitation as pigments and colors in various food applications let us now try to classify the food colors pigments have been classified in accordance to different systems and same type of colorants could be classified in different groups for example carotenoids could be present in almost every group today the classification of colorants by their origin and legislation are most important systems among the systems which we are going to discuss therefore in agreement with the consumer preferences which clearly favor the natural pigments over synthetic pigments is obtained from laboratories and different kinds of research activities so now let us look at the systems of classifications of colorants there are various kinds of classifications the first classification is based on origin now as per the origin classification we have the pigments which are grouped as natural pigments synthetic pigments and inorganic pigments in natural pigments we have carotenoids anthocyanin and curcumin and these uh, and these natural pigments are organic compounds which are obtained from live organisms then we have the synthetic colorants which are all 
approved colorants and they are all organic compounds which are obtained by synthetic procedures then we have the next next category that is the inorganic pigments under which we have the titanium dioxide and this titanium dioxide is found in nature but it is also obtained by synthetic procedure then we have the second category of classification the classification based on the chemical characteristic Coming to the second type of classification that is the classification based on chemical characteristics. Now based on chemical characteristics, the pigments are grouped as chromophores with conjugated systems and metallo-coordinated compounds. Now, now the pigments which come under chromophores with conjugated systems are carotenoids, anthocyanins, beta-lanes, caramel and other approved colors. Now the characteristics of these are that they are multiple double bonds which are separated by only one single bond. Then under the chemical characterization we have the second category that is metal coordinated compounds under which we have heme colors like myoglobin, hemoglobin, chlorophyll etc. And the characteristics of these is that a metal is present in their chemical structure due to which we see a color very very visibly. Then coming to the third type of classification that is a specific structural characterization of natural pigments. Under the third category of classification we have the specific structural characteristics of natural pigments and under this category we have the tetrapyrrole derivatives, the carotenoids, the isoperanoids, n-heterocyclic compounds which are not tetrapyroles, then we have the benzopyrons and we also have quinones and melanins. Now let us look at the first one that is tetrapyrazole derivatives. Under this we have the chlorophyll and heme colors. These are the compounds with four pyrrole structures. Then the second one is the carotenoids like lycopene, carotene, lutein and capsanthin. Now these are isoperanoid derivatives. Most of the compounds are polymers of eight isoperene monomers. Then we have the isoperanoids in which we have the isoperanoid derivatives. Then we have the next category that is n-heterocyclic compounds but not tetrapyroles. Under this we have the purines, terines, flavins, phenarazines, beta-lanes and these are the compounds where nitrogen is present in their chemical structure. Then we have the benzopyrans in which we have the anthocyanins and other flavonoids which are oxygenated heterocyclic compounds. Then we have the quinones. In quinones we have the benzoquinone, naphthoquinone and anthraquinones. And the quinone functional groups are found in chemical structure of all the quinones. Then we have the last one that is melanins under which we have the eumelanins and fa phacomelanins. And coming to the chemical characteristics of these melanins, they are polymeric structures which are obtained from nitrogen containing monomers. Then we have the last classification of the pigments that is as per the legislative requirements. So as per legislation, the pigments or colorants are categorized into two categories that is certified colorants and exempt from certificate colorants. Coming to the first category that is certifiable colorants, in this we have all the approved colorants which have got legal approval from either US FDA or FSSAI in case of India. Now these colorants are nothing but anthropogenic synthetics from various sources. Then in the legislative category we have the second category of colorants which are exempt from certification. Under this category we have the grape juice, titanium dioxide, caramine and synthetic beta carotene. These are all obtained from natural origin either vegetables or minerals or animal sources or sometimes they are even synthetic counterparts of some kinds of synthesis. So this is all different kinds of classification of the pigments. So as per the classifications which we have discussed, the legislative can as per the classifications which we have discussed, legislative, 
legislative classification is the most accepted one from the consumer point of view. After knowing the various pigments, the difference between pigments and colorants, the various kinds of pigments, the classification of pigments, it is also essential to learn about the choice and application of the colors or the pigments. Now, color is a very major factor of quality in the natural products to be commercialized. Nowadays, natural products are commonly processed or stored before their consumption and the quality characteristics are particular, especially when color is affected and consequently color additives have been used since times immemorial for making the food appealing from the consumer point of view. However, there are diverse factors which have to be considered when selecting the better color additive for the specific application in any kind of food matrix. The factors are, the first one is the kind or type of the color or hue which is required in the food matrix. The second one is the physical form which is applicable, whether it is a liquid form, whether it is a solid form or an emulsion which can gel well with the kind of the food matrix and for the application of the food processing. Then the third one is the property of the food stuff that will be colored, whether it is an oily water whether it is an oily matrix, whether it is a water-based product and it is also important to know about the content of the tannins, the pH of the food product, etc. so that the color stability can be maintained by knowing these factors. Then the next factor is the processing conditions, whether the processing requires heating parameters, cooling parameters and the storage conditions, the time of storage, length of storage, the kind of storage. Taking all these factors into consideration is very very important before selecting the color which is to be used into the food matrix. In addition, one more factor which is of paramount importance is the relevant legislation. Pigment regulations, they differ from country to country and sometimes between regions to regions in the same country also. The application of color is dependent on the type and the amount of the color which is used. Therefore, it is common to find the product application forms or the formulations that are specific for one manufactured product like for example the spray dried products are preferred for mass coloration whereas oil soluble colorants must be emulsified to be applied for any kind of citrus oils or it can be observed that colorant properties must always be taken into consideration to achieve the correct product coloration, solubility, the physical form, whether it is liquid, solid, powder form, paste or emulsion, etc. Apart from this, the pH, the microbiological quality of the product and other ingredients also must be considered before considering the usage of color in any kind of food product preparation. Additionally, the importance of other factors must also be taken into account like for example anthocyanins and beta lanes which are water soluble whereas carotenoids and xanthophils which are fat soluble components. Then apart from the solubility, the temperatures, the procedures, severe changes of the profile of the carotenoid. Then apart from the solubility, temperature which produces several, apart from that, the temperature which produces severe changes in the profile of any kind of carotenoid colors or pigments and the manufacturing conditions that is the extremities of pH values etc should be taken into consideration to maximize the stability of the color. As an example of how these factors affect color properties, anthocyanins are water soluble pigments and they contain significant levels of sugars. Consequently, microbiological effect is a relevant factor that must be considered in the manufacturing of products when you are using anthocyanin as a colorant. So today we have learnt about what, is, what are the pigments, what is the difference between a pigment and a color, history of the pigments which have come into existence, then after that we have seen the types of colorants or pigments, later on we have also learnt about the functionalities of different 
different kinds of pigments, metalloproteins, etc. Later on, we have learnt about the classification of pigments and finally the application of pigments in various foods. For further information on this topic, you can refer to food chemistry textbook or advanced food science textbook or any other relevant material for further information and in-depth understanding of pigments in the topic. Thank you.